How many of you listening to this right now have got off a call, had maybe 40 minutes in between that call ending and the next one, and found yourself wasting all of that time? You end up scrolling on social media, you end up doing things that are not moving the needle because you have ultimately determined that that 40 minutes is just not enough time to get into focus mode, to get work done, so that ends up being wasted time. Now, in that singular moment, 40 minutes, I, I can hear some people listening, come on, Bobby, it's just 40 minutes, it's not a big deal, right? Well, you are right. You are right where it's not a big deal, just 40 minutes in that moment, but if we do the math on how much time might be wasted in a single day with the in-between calls, on top of do the math in a week, in a month, this will add up to a lot of time. So before we even get into the weeds of this conversation today, I want you to maybe pause this, go look at your calendar from the last seven days, focus on at least your business days, and I want you to see how much time do you have in between calls, and can you be honest with yourself of how much of that time was actually utilized and how much of it was being wasted doing the wrong things or things that weren't helping you with your business. Do the math, then come back to this episode because I promise you it's going to help you be more even intentional with listening to everything we're going to discuss today. The reason that I try to optimize my calls is because I want to get more done in less time. I want to maximize efficiency. So I have eliminated all of the wasted time in between calls, and I'm gonna to explain to you how I've done that. But first, how many hours a day do I work? That's really important. There's some important context. I need to paint the picture of what my working life looks like for then you to understand how I've set up my calls to be optimally efficient for me. So in a day, I work six hours. When I say six hours, I'm not talking about I sit down for six hours and I count that as six hours. I'm talking, I have intentional 90 minute focus sprints, four of them in my day, and that's when I'm locked in, no questions asked, no scrolling, no catching up, picking up random phone calls. I'm telling you, it is absolutely locked in. So it's a 90 minute sprint, a 20 minute break, a 90 minute sprint, a 20 minute break, a 90 minute sprint, a 20 minute break. Four sprints, four breaks, done for the day. Those breaks, are either getting food or going for a walk or maybe just standing up and walking out of the office. But it works like a charm. So ultimately, like I said, I'm only working six hours a day. But of that six hours, because I'm so locked in, I really do believe what I can get done in six hours takes most people 12, maybe even more. What time do I start and stop working? This is also really important as we'll get into how to maximize the efficiency for calls. I have a hard start working time that I kind of keep flexible between 9 and 9.30 every single morning. And I have a hard stop time that tends to be more often than not 5 p.m. The reason for this is it gives me clarity on when I'm going to start working for the day, which creates healthy pressure for me to be mindful and, you know, move through my morning routine at a good pace and not just kind of tweedle my thumbs and waste time. And it also gives me a deadline of when I'm going to stop working for the day. This prevent me from procrastinating or just stacking my to-do list through the roof to a place where then I'm, I get burnt out from it. I have found the perfect balance that works for me. I found it through test, trial, and error, and that's what it is. So 9 to 9.30 a.m. start, stop by 5 p.m. So now let's get into it. How does stacking calls increase efficiency? So like I said, there are so many of us, guilty as charged, me, okay, where we have a call, let's just play this out. We have a call at 10 a.m., we have a call, a 30-minute call, then we have a call at 1 p.m., 30-minute call, and then we have a call at 3 p.m., 30-minute call. So 10 to 10.30, you get off that call. Now you have 90 minutes till the next call. Sometimes that can you can operate efficiently and actually get things done. But let's even let's actually take a step back. Let's actually I want to approach this a little bit different. Let's look at it as 30 minute calls with 30 minute breaks and then the next call. So 10 a.m. call, 11 a.m. call, 1 p.m. call. That's a better way to approach this. And there are 30 minute calls with 30 minute gaps in between. More often than not, that time is going to be wasted. You're going to get off the call. You're going to scroll on social media. It's not enough time to really drop into focus. And so now this is ultimately wasted time. So 
if we stack the calls and instead it was 10 a.m., 10.30, and 11, within that 90 minutes, you get all of your calls done and then you can go right into focus work and getting your actual task done without interruptions, okay? It's proven that for every interruption, on average, it takes 22 minutes to bounce back from that interruption. 22 minutes. That means that with just three small minor interruptions in our day, that could be an hour of our day gone. Just like that, snap of fingers, gone. So we're trying to prevent that from happening. And the way I've done that is by stacking my calls. So do I have specific hours of the day that I take calls? And how would you determine which hours work best for you? Once again, trial and error. I have found that I am most effective and efficient with my calls between 2 and 5 p.m. my time, CST. The reason for that is I find and I love the mornings to do my work, recording this podcast, writing scripts, creating short-form content, brainstorming, ideating, business ideas, etc. It's just me time. I don't take calls. I don't take meetings. I don't answer emails for the most part. Um, from 9, 9.30 a.m. till 2. That's all me time. I like the afternoons because at some point in the early afternoon, I start to get creative fatigue because I've been so locked in for those two first 90-minute sprints. I'm pretty drained to the point where I can't keep creating. I can't think outside the box because my, my, my juice is gone, but I can easily transition to calls. So I like taking my calls in the afternoon. The reason I have it from two to five is because once again, I want to keep as much open time on my calendar to do the work that is important to me, that drives my business, that gets me the awareness, et cetera. So that's the creative stuff morning till two, but also I don't want to work and take calls till seven, 8 PM at night because I, I, I do value balance. It helps me show up as the best version of me each and every day. I want to prioritize my fiance. I want to prioritize my community. I don't want work to be my only identity. I am a very well diversified individual. So I have it set where if you go to book a call with me through my calendar, it's only from 2 to 5 p.m. So if I'm in your shoes, I would challenge you to think about What hours of the day do you work best? Maybe you're a morning person for calls. Maybe you just like getting them out of the way. You want to have your calls from 9 a.m. till noon. And then you love having the afternoon to just dive into the weeds, do your work and not worry about it. Well, that's great. Just test and try. You might be someone that likes in the middle of the day. I want to do noon till three, Bobby, noon to four, whatever it might be. But the goal here is to one, identify the time of day that you feel you best optimally want to take calls, and then two, trying to stack as many of them on top of each other so that you can be efficient and effective on those calls. What if there's a gap on my calendar in between calls, right? This happens, and it's not within my control. Just because I have an, uh, you know 2 to 5 p.m. on my calendar for calls doesn't mean that every single day I have calls for three hours straight. There still will be gaps, There still will be times when it maybe is inefficient because I have a call at two, but then I have a 30 minute break and then I have a call at three. That's okay. The difference is I am being so strategic in optimizing this that at this point in the day, I've already creatively tapped out. So if I do have a 30 minute break, there are a few levers and business things that I can work on that don't take a lot of focus for me to drop into. And I can kind of drop in, get a little bit done, jump onto the next call. So it's okay. I allow myself to have these these breaks. But because I've been so strategic and I only book calls during this time, more often than not between client calls, between catch-up calls with friends or homies of mine, with brand partnership calls, more often than not, I'm optimized and I have those times booked. So it is okay if there is a gap. What if someone needs to take a call outside of my set window? So this happens. The goal is to, for me, is I have that set window two to five, but there's always going to be exceptions. 85, 90% of the time, my calls are happening between that time frame. But for example, I had a sales call with a potential client 
that was based in Europe. Now, with my 2 to 5 p.m. window, that would put it, I think, was a seven-hour difference. So um, I think it was like it's he had like the window of 9 to like 11 p.m., and that didn't work for him. He communicated, hey, these windows of time don't work. Is there any other flexibility? And I made time for him. I made noon work for him because I knew that would, that would, work, to, that would work well for him. So it's not to say that because I've had these set times to maximize my calls that I can't take a call outside that window. No, it's just, I'm trying to get 85 to 90% of my calls to happen within that window. And of course I will make an exception if needed. And that's when I adjust. So when that happens, I make it, ha- I adjust and all good. No problem. I think a side little bullet of how I've been able to maximize taking these calls between two and five is I'm always the initiator when I'm communicating with someone about call times, whether it is about a client that's signing on to work with me and now need, we need to figure out the weekly time that we're going to have our calls, whether I'm setting up a call with a brand partnership, whether I'm setting up a call with a homie, I take the initiative to say, hey, Jack, let me know if any of these days or times work best for you. And I send days and times that work in my best interest. Yes, it is selfish. But I'm doing it because it helps me show up as the best version of me in my friendships, in my business, etc. So that's also a little hint is take the initiative to set up the calls by giving people the times you want to, you want to take the calls. Because if you let them do the reverse, they might be like, hey, Bobby, uh, are you available Monday at 9 a.m., 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. CST? And you can say no. You don't have to say, hey, you know, I, I don't create an excuse. I just say I'm not available, which is not a lie. It's a boundary I've set for myself. So I'll just say I'm not available. And so I give them a different time. But I avoid that. I avoid that back and forth by always just being the initiator and setting the time. What tools or software do I use to manage my call schedule? Three softwares. And I'm not paid to say any of these. These are just what I'm using. Google Calendar. That's where I book all of my calls. I use Zoom for all virtual calls, client calls, et cetera, and Calendly. Calendly is clutch because it saves the back and forth of, does this time work with you? Does this day? I have it set on my Calendly link. I only take calls from two to five, Monday through Friday. That's it. So I send it to people. They usually book a time. If for some reason they can't make any of those days, any of those times work for the next week, few weeks, and they flag it to me, then I'll make that adjustment. What is my strategy to follow up after calls, right? Once again, not being paid to promo this, but I recently got put onto an AI software called Fathom, F-A-T-H-O-M. And I wish I discovered this software years ago because this AI sits on my calls behind the scenes. It listens to the call. And literally by the time I exit the Zoom, I go into my, my email, I have a kickback of key takeaways, summary, and action items for each individual on the call based on what we talked about. And I was nervous at first doing this, but let me tell you, it works like a charm and it has completely transformed how I take calls because I'm more present and also it is we just having someone in the background, an AI to summarize everything efficiency. So this has also helped me maximize my calls because I'm not spending time after the call writing up the next steps. It's already done for both parties. So that's been a huge unlock. So with all that being said, my challenge for you is this. Find a three hour window in your day to dedicate all of your calls. It does not matter what time of the day. You need to be realistic about what works best for you. You don't need to do two to five because that's where it works for me. You need to figure out what works best for you. Are you someone that wants to get your calls right out, out of the gate, get it done first thing in the morning? Be my guest. Maybe it's between eight and 11 or nine to noon. Cool. Maybe you're like, I love the middle day. 12 to three works great for me. We'll do that. Or maybe you're like me and you want to do the late afternoons, two to five, um, three to six, whatever it might be. Find that three hour window and do what you need to do to start moving all of your calls to that window. Most people that are listening are entrepreneurs or high performers, and 
I hope you have that power and ability to shape and move those, those calls that work best for you. Communicate it to your team, communicate it to people you're working with and how, you know, hey, I'm, I'm restructuring my call schedules. Are you available to do these, this call at X, Y, and Z time? It will take a little bit of effort, but I promise you, it will be worth it in the long run because you'll be so much more effective and efficient when you're on your calls. It will be a huge productivity unlock, helping you get more done in less time. So find that three hour window and start shaping and shifting your calendar so that you can maximize your time on calls and stop wasting the in between. No more wasted time there. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, the best way to support is please reshare this podcast on whatever platform you're listening on. So if you're a Spotify listener, you can share it right to your IG story. Uh, if you're listening on Apple iTunes, screenshot it, post it to your IG story. If it's YouTube, screenshot it. Tag me at Bob A. That's B O, three B's, four A's and a Y. Share out the podcast. You never know if someone in your community might need to hear this episode and you might be able to give that ripple effect. And it really just helps me grow the show. And I really, really appreciate it. So thank you for tuning in. It's the Beard of Man podcast.